Now in this final bit of video on how to use Hess's law in order to find enthalpies of formation or heats of reaction, and then you kind of put a bit of backstory on this. So I taught you one method where you add and subtract reactions, and this was a good method to use if you didn't have access to information because in principle you can take any reaction, add and subtract it, and get the answer. Now the problem with that method is that you kind of have to manage the delta H for the reaction it requires a bit of ingenuity. So then we took a second method, and the second method we had reactions that we measured, and we used heats of formation to tweeze out the unknown, so this way we could isolate other heats of formation and use that to solve for the unknown. This is the old, this method we're about to talk about here is the ultimate end goal of all of this, and this is something that was accomplished over 50, 60 years ago, was tabulating all these heats of formation. See, a heat and a Gibbs energy are all state functions. Once you measure them once, you don't have to measure them again. So they only depend on temperature, vo temperature molar volume, and pressure. So instead of having to take these multiple reactions, tweeze out the heats of formation, and then plug them into the heat of formation for plug those heats of formation into an unknown reaction, we can just go to tables and look this up. And one powerful resource you have at your disposal are called the NIST JANF tables. Now, the NIST JANF tables were developed by the Department of Energy, and basically they were designed to become an open source access to this type of this type of information. So it used to be back in the day, and we're talking like 20, 30 years ago, this information was really highly prized. So you would pay about four or five grand for a book of thermochemical data. And that's what you use, it's all you had access to. Now, thanks to tax dollars, this information is freely available. Now, why do we talk about this method last? Well, one, it's a pretty easy chug and, mug, chug and plug method. The second is that if you don't understand how to cancel out heat formation, you really can't do this. So the first two methods were kind of there to get you to the point that one, you'd appreciate the ease of this method, and two, you'd understand where it comes from. So this third method just basically says, write out Hess's law for the reaction, and use tabulated values to figure out the actual heat of formation. So the reaction we're gonna look at is CH4 gas plus Cl2 gas goes to CH3Cl gas and HCl gas. Now, typically what you would see in earlier problems, we had reactions we'd have to try to get there, or we'd have reactions where we started tweezing out heats of formation. What we're gonna do for this one is we're just gonna reference tabulated values. So these can be, again, looked up in the NIST JANAP tables. There's lots of resources for this. But what we had to do is what we had to do when we were looking at reactions to figure out the heats of formation. We need to route the Hess's law expression. So you still need to be able to do this in order to use tabulated values. So Hess's law says the delta H of this reaction is simply the heat of formation of HCl plus the heat of formation of CH3Cl minus the heat of formation of CH4 plus the heat of formation of Cl2. So again, what you would have done in a previous video, but now instead of having to use other reactions to find these values, we're going to look them up in the table. Now, here's the thing. You're not going to find HCl2 in most, the heat of formation of Cl2 in most tables. If you do, they're going to kind of state it to you, obviously. This is a diatomic gas, and its heat of formation is zero. So this ends up canceling out. What's the heat of, form of H, formation of HCl? If we go to NISGEN F, this is minus 92.312 kilojoules per mole. The heat of formation is CH3Cl, minus, minus 86.316. And the heat of formation of CH4, minus 74.873. So you're gonna do what you did before, but whereas you had to find the heats of formation from previous reactions and plug them in, now you're just gonna look them up in tables. The trick with this, or the complications I typically see with this, is just recognizing that this negative will distribute to that negative, so anything that's negative here ends up being a positive because it's subtraction time. But that's it. And this is what's really actually done in practice. Nobody goes through and adds and subtracts reactions. No one really goes through and uses other reactions to find the heats of formation. We have welts of these tables floating out there. And so you still need to be able to write Hess's law expression. You can't do this without it. But instead of having to use other reactions to tweeze out these heats of formations, you just look them up directly.